We'll start with the big one, which is nutrition. I mean, I think it's the big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. Um, what are what is your kind of uh, your you know the big the top few things that you think somebody could do that would have the biggest impact if they're trying to either fix or prevent one of these kind of medical issues related to high insulin? Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, um, there are four pillars of, of addressing nutrition in such a way to improve insulin sensitivity and lower insulin levels. And the first is control carbohydrates. And by that, I mean, don't get your carbohydrates from bags and boxes with barcodes. Um, that's, you know, chips, crackers, uh, bread, cereal. Um, so I'm not declaring war on all carbohydrates, um, but rather focus on fruits and vegetables. Eat them, don't drink them. Um, you know, don't make juices or smoothies out of them. So that's rule number one, control your carbohydrates because as you eat those starchy foods, your glucose levels will spike and then your insulin levels will spike and it takes a long time for them to get resolved, to come down. And by the time they're coming down, most people have spiked them back up. The second, prioritize protein. Make sure you're eating enough high quality protein to retain all your lean mass and to promote satiety. Protein's very filling. Third, I say is kind of related to number two, which is don't fear fat. A lot of people um, are, of course, nowadays afraid of fat because of the caloric content. My view is whatever fat comes with protein, eat it, enjoy it. It's supposed to be there. It's, they're supposed to come together. Don't try to don't try to get rid of the fat that's coming with the protein that you're prioritizing. And, and with regards to fat, I have a very favorable view of animal fat and fruit fat. That's the fat that comes from coconuts, avocados, and olives, the, the flesh of those fatty fruits, not the seeds um, that we nowadays extract oil from, like soybean oil or corn oil or so-called vegetable oil. It's not vegetable. There's nothing vegetable about it. That's just a clever marketing gimmick. Um, they're from seeds and they're all refined and they should be heavily, heavily avoided. And then the last one is fasting. Don't, we have to step away from the incessant eating where we nowadays are in a culture where people are eating every two hours. That mm -hmm. is just, it's bonkers to think that's healthy. It's bonkers to think that's how we were built to eat or that we've ever eaten like that in human history. We should eat much less frequently, including deliberate fasting periods. And that can be any number of ways but certainly an adult should be able to go through a 24 hour fast from time to time. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a lot of good tips. Uh, so, so let's see if I can recap. Um, so you talked about controlling the carbohydrates, especially the processed ones that come in a box with a barcode, like the crackers and the, the chips and things like that, because they're going to spike the blood sugar. And I guess they're going to kind of spike the insulin as well. Um, mm -hmm. and over time cause that to get higher and higher um, and lead to insulin resistance. You talked about prioritizing protein, um, so getting decent quality protein in your diet because it'll keep you satisfied longer, and obviously it's good for building muscle and things like that as well. And then not fearing fat, um, particularly fat that comes naturally with other foods like, like in the meat, fish, poultry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even something like cheese, you know, where it comes yep. together with protein. Mm 